Hey, love bugs, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored, and I definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time coming to my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs, my growing extended family, thank you so much for the beautiful vibes, the beautiful words that you're placing upon me as I do upon you, and you're doing upon everybody else. So I'm greatly appreciated for all those things. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste love and blessings love and light and many blessings are definitely going to come for you and if you have been watching my videos for a while i have not already what are you waiting for like and subscribe even hit that notification bell so you know when i'm about to upload my next video and if you feel like uh you're comfortable enough go ahead and drop me a line or two i love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me or even if it's about the content of my video you like to give your your positive feedback or you're telling me about your story of the gift that has been placed upon you if you feel like the video is very informative to you or it just gives you good peace of mind, you know, spread the love, like, and even share. Give me a thumbs up, like, and even share. It's all greatly appreciated. And thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. And I hope you're able to resonate with what I got going on. And the music I'm listening to today is, the meditation music I'm listening to today is 432 Hertz, Miracle Music, Rise, uh, Rise Positive Energy. Raise positive energy. Uh, deeply relaxing healing vibrations of 432 hertz of music. I will post that link in the description box below. Y'all, sorry it's so bright in here because it's like I'm actually doing my video in the morning this time. So all the light is just coming in. And I told y'all I blew my um, sound, sound bar. So I have to do it up close so I can go ahead and plug it to my computer speaker. So I apologize about the quality. But as long as you can get the message, hey, that's all that matters. But today my video is about Twin Flame 101 Heyoka story time. I'm about to tell y'all about my adoption story. My adoption story, it is, you know, I've been contemplating about this for a while because it was like a few months ago. Um, I had, someone had sent me a link to a YouTube video. Basically, this woman had pretty much almost the same story as I've been telling y'all about the things that I was going on that she was claiming that, you know, my father was her dad and, you know, she was adopted and had these musical gifts or whatever, but, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever. That that story sounds too much like this, you know, like my, my experience, but it is what it is. So it's just like, you know, going through what I went through, it was really hard. It still is hard, but, you know, I guess learning, learning everything and finding out the truth, it could be ugly, but it benefited me in the long run you know it, it got me to where i am today so it was just when i was little even when i was like four or five i used to have dreams about my dad all the time and it would be dreams that would be it was crazy because it was like uh when was it, it was in 1981 82 era but my dad wasn't you know i didn't see him a lot on tv yet so I guess I don't know if it was just because I was in Germany at the time or whatever, but the dreams that I had, he would always have these these two outfits on. It was all white and lace, and it had a black scarf wrapped around you know his neck, or it was the one like he had in the outfit uh, the outfit he had on in Purple Rain. And this was way before Purple Rain came out. He would always come to see me that way. But then there's times that you know when I was little, I had this uh, make believe friend that I told my mom he was my twin brother, um, Skipper. My mom was just like, you don't have a twin brother. I'm telling you, you don't have a twin brother. We used to argue about that all the time. But, you know, she would come in the room and I would be feeding my dad's album. Anytime my, my dad had an album come out, you know, I would just be walking around with it or whatever. And, you know, I used to ask my mom, you know, is Prince my dad or is he my brother? My mom's face would just drop like, you know, somebody said something to you or something like that. And I'm just like, no. You know, I said but why do you keep talking about Prince? I said, well, Prince is my dream daddy. I always see him in my dreams. You know, he's my dream daddy, you know? And then I used to cry when I first got his album. I cried and I said, mom, this is the one I've been talking about. This is the one that's in my dream. So it would be, you know, back and forth. And 
and they really got intense after the time I had talked to them. I know I made a video about that, you know, it was during Christmas time and I was talking about my favorite memory. But basically that was like my favorite memory of my dad because that was the first time we ever talked. And he was, uh, my mom had told me, you know, uh, your Uncle Roger is on the phone for you. And I'm just like, who is Uncle Roger? And why am I just now hearing about, you know, I'm asking all these 20 questions. She's like, Rosalind, look, this is long distance. We will talk about this later. Can you just go talk to him? He's just a very good friend of Prince's. And, you know, they work really close together. And he really wants to talk to you. He hasn't seen you since you were little. And, you know, he really misses you. You know, he was really close to the family. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And then she was just like, she waited until my dad walked off because she was, you know, my dad was upset that he kept calling because my dad, uh, the phone kept ringing and he kept hanging up on him and hanging up on him until my mom finally discussed to him, you know, look, I'm going to let you talk to her, but just do not tell her who you are. Just say you're his best friend or whatever. So he, you know, he made his promises that he wouldn't do that. So we were just talking back and forth and, you know, he was asking me about my grades and what did I do for fun. I told him ballet and, you know, he asked me what I wanted for Christmas. He ended up getting me a, um, a dollhouse for Christmas. And, I mean, that was like the best Christmas I ever had. But it was just so crazy throughout the years. Um, we went to Texas and, I, you know, and I don't know if it was a dream or not because I've been having this memory for a minute that you know i would see him like on my birthday i don't know if it was like um my ninth i think it was my eighth or ninth birthday and um i remember talking to him and i told him you know you know my mom and they were gonna have a birthday party for me i really wish he could come and then we were out here in the park on uh i think it was i think it, it was somewhere in el paso i think it was in the park on post or whatever and I seen this guy yelling and he was trying to get towards us. And my mom, you know, she had snatched me up real quick and made sure I wouldn't turn my face. So that really made me think, you know, my dad tried to come sneak and see me for my birthday and was trying to play like, you, you know, hey, you know, I'm just bringing Prince out here. You know, I sent Prince out here to say happy birthday to her. But they would never, my dad would let, never let them see me. So it, it's just really, you know, it was really messed up because throughout the years, um, I dreamt about him a lot. You know, we communicated a lot. There was a lot of times I would miss his phone call. I would be outside, you know, kids, what kids do. And it was, you know, growing up with my adoptive family was really hard. You know, uh, with my mom, she went through a lot of mental and emotional abuse with my father to the point where, you know, the reason why they, they broke up is because of my dad, my, um, my, my dad, Prince, because he always wanted to see me. And my mom really wanted him to to be able to see me. And, you know, my mom was just kept constantly telling my dad, you know, hey, all he wants to do is just see his daughter. You know, what's the big deal about that? He doesn't want to, you know, take her from us. He just wants to see her be a part of his life. So um, all the stuff like my dad was in the will or whatever, he sent that back in 88, basically leaving everything in my name, um, signed up under a certain name that I'm not going to disclose. But um, my mom made sure I saw that stuff. And it was just really crazy because it was just like he left her everything. He left her everything in the will. And he just said, basically, he left her a letter saying that he really didn't feel comfortable with, you know, leaving it to somebody else to make sure his daughter was taken care of. So he just basically put everything in my name. And if anything was to ever happen to him, it would, um, it would be in litigation for years, which see that now is still in litigation so um you know my dad just took all the paperwork and you know basically tortured my mom for years and didn't want her to have make sure I had any contact with my dad I don't know if he told my dad I moved in with him but all of a sudden the phone call stopped you know I was just wondering you know why um they kept going you know why I haven't heard from my uncle Roger in a while so um, after a while, I moved back down to the South when, when my, my parents hit, my adopted dad and his wife had moved in next to, you know, the phone calls had started again. We seen Paisley Park coming up on the caller ID or Nelson Rogers coming up and that was when caller ID first came out. So it was just like the name was always backwards. So I thought, you know, the name was, you know, whoever was called him was called Nelson Rogers. And it was funny one day that, um... My father had uh, had called 
and assumed that I was my stepmom and he really pretty much didn't have <laughs> too many nice things to say to me. You know, he thought it was, we were going off on each other and it was kind of funny because, I mean, it's not funny back then, but it's funny now when I look back at it because it was just like, wow, we didn't know who each other were. But he was basically saying, you know, y'all told her that, you know, she found out she was adopted, which I did. I found out on my birthday I was adopted. Uh, even though I've asked my parents, you know, before before then, you know, him I adopted because I never looked like either one of them and they had a big age gap. So it was like, you know, back in those days, you didn't hear a woman of my mom's age having any children. So, um, you know, it's just basically fast forward until, you know, I was 14, 15 and, you know, the, the dreams got intense. They really did to the point where I was having night terrors, you know, I would constantly see my dad as like a superhero, just constantly snatching me up and telling me he's going to take me to my real family. The people that, you know, that are my family now is not my real family. And he was having a, a it was just really weird. It had like a, he had like a big bag of money and it was, you know, like you see in the cartoons, like somebody has a bag of money and you see these dollar bills just flying all over the place. It's like, they're not going to get you more of this money. And then when I finally told him about my dream, you know, waking up in, you know, night tears, screaming and sweating and stuff, uh, they took me into a therapist <laughs> and went and made sure that I was not able to dream anything that had anything to do with my dad, anything that had the name Prince in it. It was wiped out of my life. So for a while, a lot of people asked me, how come, you know, you didn't mention your dad how come you didn't try to look for him I said if you only knew I was put under hypnosis and it, it sounds crazy but it really did happen it was just because the point where the the night the night terrors were getting so bad I wouldn't I wasn't getting sleep for months at a time I would just be walking around and basically be sleepwalking so they it got to that point where they just told me you know what you need to go to the therapist and see why you keep having these nightmares and then when the stuff started getting too close to home for the truth to come out then they made ask the therapist is there any kind of way you can like take away these dreams or whatever so basically I wasn't able to dream for months months and months at a time so that basically you know the twin flame connection was cut off so it didn't come back until after um my dad passed all the, the things that was going on I would have dreams like it was almost two years before he passed that there was somebody dying in an elevator and I assumed it was my adoptive father because I, I wasn't really sure about all the situations with my mom because she never had the paperwork or, nor the proof to prove that Prince was my father because she was just like, well, he took everything that I could to prove it to you. You know, he made sure he took that. So, you know, they wiped out my memory or whatever and I was always wondering, you know, until I brought up Prince or whatever, they would, you know, get uneasy get, you know, I'm not a fan, and I'm just like, no, wait a minute, <laughs> I never heard of anybody not really being a fan of Princess, so, you know, I really went through a, a really hard time, so it's just like, when I started doing these videos, it was like, I was going through hell, I was going through rage, you know, trying to understand why my family did this to me, why would they hold a secret like this, but it was over money, they were getting money from my dad this whole time, and using it for their their own benefit while you know me and my children didn't get anything so it was just when i started doing these these videos like i told you before when when you have things that you go through in your life and they're really tragic you never know what story your story will have an effect on somebody to have them look at life differently and it, i mean it really humbled me to go through all these things you know um some of the things I've gotten over to the point where you know there's gaps in between because it was just too painful even to think about because it was just like I would constantly hear my stepmom talking bad things about you know my family and I'm just like how do you know these things about you know my family how you know what how do you know these things about these people how do you know these personal situations which I won't bring up but it was it was not pretty but they would make sure I would know about these things so it's just like I always when I found out the truth I always wanted to be an advocate for people that that or children that were adopted that um that go through you know abuse like this that goes through any kind of 
mistreatment, you know, that some people, you know, it's sad when some people just adopt kids for tax purposes or, you know, they foster kids just for money. And that's basically what I went through. You know, my, my dad tried to tear my mom down from the situation and he's trying to do the same thing to me. But the only thing is I was able to rise above from all this. I was able to make videos and, you know, let people know, you know, even though you go through tragic things, that's not what all you're about. You're not a product of your situation. You're not a product of that trauma that you went through. You have to be able to face your things, face your fears and be able to voice your opinion especially when you know you've been through something that's so tragic like this you know and I know a lot of people might not believe it you know that's fine but this is my story you know a lot of people might not understand a lot of people might be able to resonate with what I went through but some people won't and it's just the messages for people that are going through things that need to look at life differently to put their their mind into a different perspective when they're going when they're going through hardship to try to find that peace of mind try to find that happiness when you don't see it around you you have to be able to find that within yourself so i hope you were able to get something out of this video i wasn't trying to bring anybody down or bring any bad vibes out because i contemplated with a couple of my close friends like you know should i put this video out you know do i really want people to know right now exactly what i've been through in my life you know, so because it upsets me when people say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about or this is not your dad or you haven't cried enough or you don't express yourself enough. People don't know what people go through behind closed doors. There's many days I've cried. There's days I've pulled my hair out. I've lost a lot of hair from this situation. I've lost a lot of weight. I've lost over 85 pounds in like the last, in the first six six to seven months after my, my father passed. So that was a lot of tragedy and stress that I put on my body that I really went through. So when you know you're going through stuff, find that peace of mind, find that happiness, even when it's not really easy to find at that time. Know that you're not gonna go do bad things forever. Knowing when blessings come, they're gonna keep coming and they're gonna keep coming. And knowing that you deserve them. And when you went through something, knowing there's a reason behind everything you went through. I, I used to always ask, why? <laughs> why did I have to go through this? But then when I started noticing I'm making YouTube videos on, I noticed how I'm starting to impact people's lives. How I'm helping them change their mind or change their way of thinking about things. Not just to be correct, but just to make you look at things a different way to have a complete different understanding so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you were able to take something out of it please no negative comments because you know this was already hard enough for me as it is to, you know come out and say this but like i said i hope you were able to get something out of it like and subscribe even hit that notification bell so you know when your girl's about to upload our next video spend, send out as much love and light and positivity as you possibly can and i will see you on my next video Know that you are blessed and highly favored and truly loved. And know there is always somebody out there praying for your better days. And I will see you on my next video. Peace. And meanwhile.